Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MacTube. In this video, we will discuss about the Maclaurin series. So look at this. You should be very good with this infinite expansion that is called the Maclaurin series. So Maclaurin series is a technique which will help you convert a function into a series form. Uh, one advantage of converting functions into series form is you will be able to differentiate and integrate certain functions whose derivatives are like what you call hard to find. More than derivatives, it's very useful for integration. You have already seen one application of um, what you call infinite series in differential equation. In differential equation, in second order differential equation, when you have the right side as polynomial, this infinite series is one very good way of uh, finding the particular integral. Another application, that's a recent development, another application is, uh, like what you call, when the computer programmers want to express some function, uh, like what you call, for their advantage or for their programming, they find it easy to use the series form because it can be put inside a loop. Anyway, right now in your mathematics exam, they may ask uh, what you call, what is the expansion of this function, what's the expansion of that function, etc. I'll do two or three problems and you have to practice a lot. Okay, so let's go for the first one. It will be very good with this formula, that's it. Okay, so the first question is, find the expansion of the function y is equal to cos x. So, you can follow any notation that you like. If you want, you can use this statement f of x. Um, but personally, I like the second one. Okay, so y is equal to cos x. And on the other side, if there is space, we can write y at 0. y at 0 means the value of the function when x equal to 0. So cos 0, if you don't know the value, use a calculator. Cos 0 is 1. It's better that you know the value. But in examination, you have to learn to survive. So always remember, you have a calculator. Now what you do is, you find y1. y1 equal to minus sin x, the derivative. Now, y1 at 0 implies, come on, think about it. Yeah, the value of the derivative when x equal to 0. So, that will be minus sin 0 degree, which is equal to 0. Now, y2. y2 means the second derivative, that is minus cos x. So, y2 at 0 means minus cos 0, that is minus 1. Now, you might be wondering, how many times do we have to differentiate? Because writing an in infinite form is impossible. Come on, even if you are asked to write like 10, 20 terms, it becomes too difficult. So who can write up to infinity? No one. So if you are wondering how many terms you should write, remember three non-zero terms. So it is a norm, it is nominal to write three non-zero terms. And sometimes in the examination, they will mention. So if they have mentioned, you have to follow the instruction. If it is not mentioned, it is a norm that we write three non-zero terms. So I can see that I have created one, two non-zero terms here. So next, y3, the derivative, so that will be sine x. So y3 at zero is equal to zero. So I have got only two non-zero terms. So I go for y4. The derivative sine x is cos x. So y4 at 0 will be cos 0. That's equal to 1. Okay. Now what you do is you write the formula. y is equal to y at 0 plus x by 1 factorial y1 at 0 plus x square by 2 factorial y2 at 0 plus x cube by 3 factorial y3 at 0 plus x to the power 4 by 4 factorial y4 at 0 plus etc. 
uh, it is really good that you write till the term you have evaluated so that substitution will be comfortable so what is y look at the question cos x what is y at 0 plus i saw this is 0 plus what is y2 at 0 yeah minus 1 so x square by 2 factorial into minus 1 plus 0 plus x power 4 by 4 factorial into 1 uh, plus etc so cos x is equal to now uh, write it a little bit neatly x square by 2 factorial plus x to the power 4 by 4 factorial minus dot 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 that's it you can leave it as plus also but i know the expansion so i put minus it's actually plus minus plus minus plus minus if you want to write more terms you can add more terms but in examination time is very important so unless otherwise specified your series should have minimum three non-zero terms okay now let's go for one really really difficult question uh, you can search online uh, many people might have answered this one particular question and sometimes uh, like what you call in examinations they ask this as a prove that question and you should be very good in differentiation to do this problem so please write find the Maclaurin expansion of y is equal to natural logarithm of 1 plus e power x by the way in your books this is the proper way of writing but in your books they normally write log 1 plus e power x and in calculus we are supposed to understand it implies log to the base e if you are doing derivatives and integration according to your books and according to your question papers you are supposed to know that the log has base e okay now let's start the question looks so simple but it's going to be very lengthy and normally what happens is they will ask you to expand up to x to the power 4 if it is not mentioned then you can uh, like what you call leave it with three terms but normally they will ask or they will put it like a prove that question okay so y at 0 y at 0 means log 1 plus e to the power 0 and that will be log 2 and to be honest you should be writing ln 2 natural logarithm of 2 okay now y1 so we found one non-zero term so this is 1 by 1 plus e to the power x times e to the power x okay now uh, look at this you know that if you write sin x equal to w and if I ask you what is the x value you will tell me sin inverse w similarly if I write x square is equal to something you will tell me x is equal to plus or minus square root so basically if you are given a function you know how to take the inverse by the way do you remember what is the inverse of log x suppose i say log x equal to t and by the way the base is e so what will be x equal to e to the power t so remember the inverse of logarithm is exponential function so the trick the trick to do this problem uh, is you should remember the given function log 1 plus e power x is equal to y so 1 plus e power x will be log inverse of y but we don't use the term log inverse the inverse of logarithm is exponential function so that 1 by 1 plus e power x equal to 1 by e power y which is equal to e power minus y now i am going to use it here so i am going to write the first derivative as e power minus y into e to the power x that is y1 equal to e to the power minus y plus x because you know that a power m times a power n is a to the power m plus n okay so this is the trick to do the problem a little bit easy than the regular process 
So what is y1 at 0? Look at this y1 at 0 means the value of the derivative when x equal to 0. So that will be e to the power minus. What is the value of y at 0? We already found log 2 plus what is the x value? 0. Uh, that gives uh, e to the power actually this becomes log 1 by 2 minus log a is log 1 by a and exponential function and logarithmic functions are inverses so you get 1 by 2 okay now we go for so we got two non-zero values y2 y2 will be what is the derivative can you see chain rule here we have e to the power something so e to the power same thing multiplied by what is the derivative y y1 plus what is the derivative of x that is 1 so now we write y2 at 0 y2 at 0 will be e to the power minus can you tell me what happens to y when x equal to 0 we will go up log 2 plus x is 0 and can you tell me what happens to y1 when x equal to 0 we just wrote 1 by 2 so minus 1 by 2 plus 1 so that is what is this 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 that will be 1 by 4 now we got this so we already have three non-zero values so if you want you can write the series but I told you normally they ask you to expand till you get x to the power 4 so let's go till that power so i'm going for the next derivative y3 now you have to be very good in differentiation before doing this problem um, so look at this green and blue i'm going to apply product rule so first function and the derivative y1 is y2 plus constant will be 0 plus second function so green derivative of blue plus blue derivative of yeah minus y1 plus 1 and e to the power minus y plus x times minus y1 plus 1 so y3 is equal to you'll get e to the power minus y plus x then minus y2 uh, plus minus y1 plus 1 the whole squared so let's go for y3 at 0 so e to the power minus now I remember the values y at 0 plus 0 minus y2 we found just now 1 by 4 plus minus 1 by 2 plus 1 the whole squared so this is 1 by 2 and this is minus 1 by 4 b plus 1 by 4 so that is equal to 0 so we have to go for the fourth derivative and i'll repeat once more you have to do this only if they have specified find till x to the power 4 or i prove that question so y4 the ultimate one we have to apply product rule can you see uh, We'll color it like this so y4 equal to first function now derivative of green what's the derivative of green y2 becomes y3 plus something to the power 2 so 2 into minus y1 plus 1 times minus y2 plus green minus y2 plus y1 plus 1 the whole squared into e to the power minus y plus x times minus y1 plus y okay now i'll write y4 at 0 here there's no space there so e to the power how much minus log 2 plus 0 and y3 at 0 we just found to be 0 then 2 into i know that this is going to be 1 by 2 you can substitute and check it minus 1 by 4 i think it was 1 by 4 yeah minus 1 by 4 and plus minus 1 by 4 
plus it will be 1 by 4 again so this will be the whole thing will be 0 so we get 1 by 2 into minus 1 by 4 that is minus 1 by 8 okay that's it so we get the expansion so let's write the terms clearly here y at 0 how much did we get log 2 and y1 at 0 how much did we get 1 by 2 you can check it I have the answers here and y2 at 0 that is again 1 by 4 y3 at 0 deceived us it became 0 that is why we had to go for y4 at 0 that is minus 1 by 8 so the expansion will be log 1 plus e power x equal to y at 0 so log 2 plus x by 1 factorial into 1 by 2 plus x square by 2 factorial into 1 by 4 plus x cube by 3 factorial times 0 plus x power 4 by 4 factorial times minus 1 by 8 now you can simplify so that's it um, I just gave you the concept or how to apply Maclaurin series these two problems are not enough for your exam if you want to be confident in the exam take your past papers practice as many questions as you can so i'll be back with another video so till then my friends bye